broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. This is Dennis Streeter from Desai Solutions. Welcome to our webinar today on seven ways that PDM supports engineering and management goals. Uh, we're just uh, kicking off the session. You should be able to see our screen and uh, hear both myself and uh, Greg Dawes, who's going to be the application engineer going through the technical aspects of today's presentation. Greg, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. I think we uh, have people coming in, so let's give them a few minutes before we kick off officially. But uh, for those of you who are arriving early, uh, this is a listen-only mode presentation, but you are welcome to enter questions as they come up or cross your mind in the chat window. I'll be um, following those questions and uh, trying to stage them appropriately for Greg so he can stay on task with the technical portion of the presentation today. After each of the uh, subjects that we cover on the uh, agenda today, I'm going to do a brief summary on what uh, could be potential management goals that relate to the engineering benefits that you're going to see presented by Greg today. That's going to be our format for the presentation. For those of you that have sat in on this series through the course of the year, following along much as we've done here in the past. So maybe um, one more minute, we'll go silent for a little bit and let the rest of those folks come into the session and then we'll get started. Okay, I think we're just about ready to kick off. There was one other item that uh, everybody always asks about. I forgot to uh, bring to your attention this webinar is going to be recorded. So you don't have to feverishly write notes. If you want to review something or share information that you see today with your colleagues, uh, you'll have the option to get back to this as it will be archived on our website. And uh, we'll be sending out information to everybody that attends on when that's posted and where you can get the link to uh, view this and share the information. So Greg, let me hand it off to you to get uh, things rolling here. All right, uh, so this is gonna be kind of seven quick hits on uh, connecting uh, management goals with the actual features and functions in, in the engineering tool of PDM. Uh, the seven quick hits that we're gonna touch on are managing best practices design reuse, notifications, workflow, search and find, collaboration, multiple people working on the same project at the same time, and uh, file support. So working with uh, files outside of engineering as well as our uh, engineering CAD data. So first up, uh, managing best practices. Um, and, and I'm just doing a, a small example from each one of these sections, but uh, one of the things that we can do uh, inside of the software is manage uh, templates uh, throughout the, the organization. So inside of my vault, my test vault here, I have a section called SolidWorks Standards. And this is where SolidWorks CAD is pointed to find things like uh, my file templates, like when I create a brand new part, an assembly or a drawing, uh, my sheet format templates. Uh, I have sounds in here. I have my WeldNet profiles, uh, demo libraries, or just libraries in general, uh, such as uh, reusing parts, and then custom appearances that uh, I've added myself here in little Photoshop files that our uh, SolidWorks is looking at for my custom appearances. Uh, we've always been able to point SolidWorks to this location, uh, but with a PDM system, there is a server and there's a client. So all of this is on the server and it only gets updated if I say, hey, right click a folder and go get the latest version of that folder. Uh, in PDM actually, we can go into the administration tool and set up properties for all the groups. Select those groups. 
and actually go to my cache options. So that's what's stored locally. Uh, on the server, it's always, always going to be the latest and greatest, but we want to force people as soon as they log in each time to grab the latest and greatest from only certain folders. So I'm going to grab the SolidWorks standards folder, and there's a little check mark down here for re refresh cache during login. And this is going to make sure that every time someone logs into the vault, they have the latest and greatest when it comes to drawing templates, uh, appearances, anything that we store in that folder, it's going to refresh it. Uh, and get the latest each time I log into the vault. There's another option down here that you may see called clear cache during logout. This can be useful for um, companies that have restrictions on uh, taking engineering data outside of the country. This is a way that we can, as soon as you log out of the vault, have a folder inside of the vault for maybe military projects or just projects that have sensitive data in them. And as soon as you log out of the vault, it clears those off of your local machine. So a couple of options there to maintain those best practices, and I can just save that from there. Dennis, is there something you wanted to hit on each one of these uh, topics? Yeah, a couple of key points, I think, that tie this back into, you know, from management perspective, best practices really start to create a repeatable process that everyone in the organization becomes familiar and comfortable using. So many of your operations in your company become faster and second nature. Those are the types of things that management are always kind of looking for technology to do for them. You also tend to create, I think, from our observations and follow-ups, a lot of buy-in from everyone as you define and hone these practices. So stronger team building becomes another benefit to your organization. And of course, I think um, probably the last thing to highlight, onboarding, Companies are constantly growing, looking for new employees to come into their organization. Management gets concerned about what is the process to bring those folks in and get them up to speed and as productive as soon as possible. Best practices and applying these things in a digital format become a great way to achieve those goals for your management team. That's what I got for you here on this, Greg. Yeah, uh, I like that managing best practices is our first topic because you're going to see in each and every one of these that uh, uh, creating a repeatable process that's managing our best practices is going to be included in every single one of these sections. So uh, the next the next one up is uh, design reuse. So maybe we have an assembly when we, we want to create uh, we, got, we have a product and we want to create another uh, a product from that uh, an iteration of that. So uh, first thing I'll do is kind of managing our best practices here. I have uh, mine structured to be project based and uh, a best practice would be that in every single one of these project folders, I have a similar folder structure and file structure. So I have a design data folder, documentation that goes along with the project, specifications that go along with the product like material specs, and then a project checklist for each one of my projects. So I'm up to project 12 here. If I right click out in space in PDM Professional, we can fire off templates. So if I go to new projects and create a new standard project, again, this is just creating a repeatable process. I can have a form, it doesn't have to look like this. Uh, it can be a, a custom form that you fill out with key information. Uh, things like uh, what type of machine it is. So I'm gonna call it, it's a saw. And then I can use other drop downs to fill that out. It's going to be a miter saw and the customer name is uh, Acme. And when I do that, it automatically creates a new folder structure, names it the next serial number, which is project 13. And when I dive into that brand new folder, I already have the folder structure and file structure, my project checklist already created there. So it's again, baking in a repeatable process. Well, the reason I want to do this is that I have in project three, a miter saw that you can see in the preview down below that I want to create an iteration from, but have it be a brand new project. Uh, and this is kind of what it comes to uh, design reuse. And one of the tools we have available in PDM for design re reuse is copy tree. So if I go to, if I select an assembly or a part and I go to tools, copy tree, 
This is the copy tree tool. It looks a little busy, but if you just work your way down uh, all of the options, uh, you can see uh, you can copy a project or relate back to uh, previous parts within an assembly to copy the entire tree of a project. Uh, if any of you are SOLIDWORKS users, it's similar to pack and go, but it's gonna maintain the history of these files. When we do a pack and go within SOLIDWORKS, it completely breaks those files uh, from any history that happened on the original assembly. So what I'm gonna do here is, uh, I'm gonna keep mark this check marked for preserve the relative paths. I'm gonna browse to the new location. So instead of project three, I wanna go into project 13. I can include simulation results, drawings. Uh, I can include, I can rename or regenerate serial numbers uh, on these files if I make a copy. And in this case, by default, it's gonna select every single file in the assembly to do a copy with, but I really just want uh, what's gonna change. So I'll select all of these and uncheck them. And I just want the top level assembly and maybe I want a new head assembly is what's really gonna be the difference between these two products. Uh, I can automatically check in the design after I copy and even have a comment, new product design from project three. All of the files that are checked, it's gonna be like a, a brand new file in the system. All of the files that are unchecked are gonna be referenced back to the original. So not every part nut bolt in this is going to be uh, different some of them are going to refer to the exact same parts. So uh, it will refer back to the original folder for these. Anything that has a check mark under the copy information, it's uh, going to create a brand new file. I hit copy and let that run. We can go ahead and hop into our project 13 folder to check out what it's doing there. Oh, looks like it's got to complete before I can move on. You know, while you're waiting for that, Greg, I think I'd just like to interject. I really like how you've laid out the format for today's presentation, starting with those best practices and building on that. Uh, hopefully everybody already kind of caught you know, some of the things that you're doing to enforce those best, best practices, like the naming conventions you showed for your project folder and how those subfolders are created. Those all kind of like Lego set building on one another here. So once that's finished, we can go peek into our project 13 folder. And if I go under design data, because I chose to keep the relative paths, uh, when I jump into design data, uh, exactly like the previous folder, it has my assembly and then the components that I'd copy over. Keep an eye out uh, if for the rollout events that are happening in October for SOLIDWORKS 2018. Uh, because one of the new enhancements in PDM for 2018 is the, the ability to branch and merge, which is really similar to copy tree. But instead of creating a brand new project, we're splitting off in two or three directions for ideas on a project. And then we can merge the ideas uh, that we, uh, so we have uh, design iteration A, B, and C. We can choose to combine maybe B and C to a new product. And that'll be in 2018. So that's what I had for design reuse. Great example. I mean, that's stuff that we used to do all the time. I remember back, you know, the early days of CAD, and those of you that uh, may have, may have uh, run into me before, you know I've been around the block a little bit. But uh, the early goals were always design it once and find as many ways as possible to reuse it. And what that does for supporting management really becomes down to 
you're going to have quicker design times. So in essence, you're going to be able to focus more on designing better products for your company or potentially doing more new product design. And uh, every company is out to expand its product line. So I know that last one plays a critical role in planning and thinking for management. And again, it supports those best practices, as Greg mentioned. You're starting to do a lot of things consistently in your organization, whether it's a part design or how you organize data. Both of those things are supported. And I think sometimes some of the, uh, a couple of lost items here that might not be quite as obvious. A lot of our customers are concerned about having multiple part numbers and what that does to inefficiencies downstream. Purchasing has the same part, but different numbers. They have to go out and source that twice instead of catching it up front. You're starting to stock same components multiple times in inventory. So inventory counts are not managed as effectively. But instead, when you are starting to combine your parts and not redesign and reuse them, uh, but I should say reuse them effectively, not duplicate them, now you're giving folks like purchasing the ability to go out to their suppliers and better leverage and negotiate pricing for you because the volumes are going to be higher and your suppliers know that they're getting consistent information instead of the same thing for them that they're going to have to duplicate and waste time redoing what they've already done for you. So those are some of the benefits that I see in design reuse for uh, helping meet management goals, Greg. Uh, the, the image that I have on the screen here is, is a little bit showing the why you would reuse instead of just recreate. Uh, as an engineer, it can be really easy to just say, oh, I can model this up really quick and give it a new part number. Uh, but that has a, a downstream effect of all of these things that can go along with a new part. So a new fixture, a new bomb, a new preparing uh, NC programming, a new bill of materials, new drawings, all of that adds up to a lot of time for a, a new part that may have already existed. So if we can reuse, we are, are saving all the time that goes into not just a new CAD part, but everything that goes along with that new part. Great example. Next up is notification. Big down effect, doesn't it? Yes, yes. <laughs> Next up is uh, notifications. So I thought I'd grab the, the you've got mail uh, from the what, what is this late '90s? I think it is. But uh, the ability, and this is really uh, from management terms. This is about communicating and communicating engineering data and engineering ideas. Uh, the workflow from uh, an idea all the way to a manufactured product, how do we do that? And we seem to get lost, and uh, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well, getting lost in email. Um, uh, something didn't get done, and then you reach out and you say, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to send you that email. So some of the things that we can do to automate this communication with notifications inside a PDM. So to show that, um, we have a couple of different types of notifications that we can set up within PDM. Uh, the simplest just being uh, jumping into a folder here, uh, maybe into a folder that has a few files here. And uh, this ARM component has been uh, maybe a little bit of a struggle to get this through the design process. It's, it's the one, it's the file that's holding up, uh, it's the bottleneck that's holding up this project from getting released or delivered, uh, you name it. So I wanna keep an eye on it. So I can actually just right click that singular file and there's an option for notify. And I have a bunch of different options here on uh, how to notify me about this file. I can say notify me when it's checked out. That means somebody's about to edit this file and I wanna know about that. Notify me when it's checked in. So maybe it's checked out and we have a big list, a to-do list of things to change about that file. I wanna know when that has been completed. So I'll get a notification when that, the, that checklist has been done and the file's been checked back in. Uh, notify me uh, uh, when the state enters. This is just a list of all of the different states I have in my workflow, and I'll show workflow here in a moment. moment. But uh, I want to be notified, even though I'm not part of that approval process, I want to be uh, notified when it, it hits waiting for approval. Just keeping an eye on this file a, a little bit more. So, uh, and you can see, uh, notify me when it leaves the state, when it enters the state, or me when, and dot, 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 that's building up my own rule of when I want a notification regarding this file. Uh, another type of notification that we can do 
is going under my notifications and adding a folder notification. So instead of just that individual file, I want to be notified when any of the files in this folder are being touched. I can add a folder notification about that. And lastly, and the, probably the most common, is if I go into the administration tool and look at my workflow, we can set up notifications based on this workflow. This is a simple workflow of uh, a design process going under editing, going through an approval process. If it's approved, it gets uh, released, and then a change process below. And a couple of these transitions, the ones without boxes around them, have uh, this little gold bell on it. Let me see if I can zoom in there for you. Yeah. So uh, some of these transitions have this little gold bell on them. And that means that there are notifications associated with this transition. And if I open up the properties of that transition, we can look at the notifications that are assigned. And engineering is getting a notification when files go from waiting for approval to approved. You can now use this file, this part file, in all of your assemblies. It's an approved design. Another example of a workflow notification is when files go from under editing to waiting for approval. We want to notify the people that are going to uh, be doing the approval. So change control is being notified when it goes from under editing to waiting for approval. That's just a couple of uh, examples of notifications that we can use in the system. What they look like is when they send them to you, you have two options. So if I go to my inbox here, we have our own internal inbox that we can look at notifications, whether they're file, folder, uh, task notifications, whether uh, a certain task within PDM has been completed or not. Uh, and then we can also hook this up to uh, your internal email system so you're not dealing with two mailboxes that you're dealing with. It's sending directly to your uh, Outlook inbox, for say. So a little bit about uh, helping communication through notifications in PDM. Good examples, Greg. I think that, uh, you know, what I had noted down again for how this plays into uh, helping management meet their goals is effective communications today are key and upfront with everybody's uh, job, I think, throughout the company. And management especially is following to see where bottlenecks exist and uh, communicating whether it's done you know through the email examples that you provided or making a phone call or you'll have some other examples coming up i know down through the uh, rest of the session here today these can be bottlenecks and they also can be prone to getting overlooked or forgotten as you noted and the information doesn't get communicated effectively so the more that we can do to help this out the more management is going to see the value in moving engineering into this type of a solution. Again, consistency, repeatable best practices are huge. And notifications really provide that benefit to helping create a profitable organization, at least from companies that we've talked with that have moved in this direction. Pass it back to you for the next one. So the next one up here is workflow. We're using terms that are uh, particular to our uh, software tool, PDM, but really if we look at workflow, it's just process control for files. And uh, process control for files looks like this inside of PDM. We've already touched on it a little bit. This is an, a, a different example of a process control where something starts in pending, it's submitted for approval, and it goes through a loop on the right here for uh, whether uh, it needs to be placed on hold, resubmitted. Once it goes through a, a review process, it goes on to be released and implemented. Just another example to show you that it, uh, these uh, you're provided with a workflow out of the box, but it's really easy to make your own. So let's dive into workflows a little bit more. Again, that's in the administration tool of PDM. And I'm going to look at the default workflow here. If you look over at the left in this tree, I have a section for workflows, and you can see that we can have multiple workflows depending on uh, the, the file, the style of the file. So if it's, uh, uh, it's an Excel document that's saved into a certain folder, it goes under engineering change workflow. 
all other files that don't that aren't engineering change documents or SolidWorks documents can go into an Office Documents folder. We'll talk about that one here in a minute. But for this one, for our CAD documents themselves, uh, we have two types of things in a workflow. There are states, and those are the things that are in those tan boxes. And we have transitions that aren't in the boxes. And for each of these, we can set up permissions per uh, user or per group. We always suggest to do it per group because it makes it a lot easier to manage those permissions. But if I click on that state and I go to its permissions, I can see all of the groups in that uh, that are assigned to this under editing state and what permissions they have during them. Um, there are a lot of different permissions in here, but the ones that you should be aware of, uh, we're just controlling read access. If they even if they log into the vault and something is un, in, does, under editing, can they even see the file or is it invisible to them? And edit. So are they able to check out the file, edit it, and check it back in? And then also approvals. And that's more about the transitions. So if I click on one of the transitions and go to the permissions, we can see which groups have the permissions to move this from under editing to waiting for approval. I had mentioned task notifications earlier. This is where we can also fire off tasks. When something goes from waiting to, for approval to approved, or it skips the approval process, this no approval required, that's kind of a dangerous step. So we've only given that uh, ability to a couple of groups. But we can set up actions that happen with uh, tasks. So we're actually incrementing the the revision, so the file is getting revision bumped when it moves from under editing to approved. And we're also firing off a task. In this case, it's called convert SLD DRW to PDF. Uh, and, and really, all that's doing is it's taking any SolidWorks drawing file that's in this set that's moving from under editing to approved, and it's printing it to a PDF to a certain location. So we're firing off tasks uh, as part of our process control. And if you want to look at what that task is, some of these are built right into the system and you can build your own as well. There's a convert that gives you a lot of different uh, options on the fly to pick from. I wanted to just have it be invisible in the background. So all of the options are already pre-picked for the user. So the, uh, the name of the file when it gets pushed out as it, uh, it just being pushed out as a PDF is not changeable. It just happens in the background uh, and it gets, gets put into a certain folder. So workflow is all about process control and it's really easy to create states and transitions to uh, control a process. I can even change the process on the fly uh, and there's no server reboot or anything. It's live right away. So I, I have it maybe when things are in approved, we didn't think when we initially made this workflow that we would need a state for files that are obsolete. We need to, to keep them around for history's sake, but we don't want to use them. So I'll just right click out in space and make a new state and call it obsolete. Maybe give it a new tr uh, icon like a trash can here and assign uh, only the admins and only the admins are allowed to check out the file and move the file. Everybody else can't do anything with those files. And we'll create a transition from approved to obsolete. And maybe change control is the only group that can move files from approved to obsolete. I hit save and my workflow is live for the rest of the PDM users in the company. That's what I have for workflow. Another good example. I think that, uh, you know, you hit it spot on is, again, Greg, that uh, workflow is really central to the process of PDM. And uh, it really kind of goes hand in glove with what we've been talking about with notifications and best practices. Some of the things that we see that really lend benefits to management value in looking at uh, a workflow system. More of our customers are going outside to have their processes evaluated. What you do with helping to adopt those changes, or maybe you're doing this internally with committees and groups that you're reviewing your practices, trying to improve them constantly. PDM allows you to document those things digitally so that again, they're being enforced as a best practice. 
And for companies, if anybody's on here who adheres to any compliance standard like ISO or ANSI or FDA, FAA, et cetera, military, they all look for audits to confirm that you're following their processes and you're compliant with their processes. We've had quite a few customers in this regard find that their audits, once they show that they have this documented digitally, audits become almost a checkbox activity now. You're not talking about days for people to come in, review your information, look through folders, look through binders, check that you're doing what you say you're going to do in your uh, overview, like your ISO compliance uh, documentation. It's right here in front and being uh, logged by the PDM system. So those are the things that I've got for you here, Greg. All right. This next one's kind of fun. I'll leave this screen up here for a couple of seconds while I introduce the topic, but see if you can you can uh, find Waldo in the picture. So uh, it's the idea of, of searching and finding, not just searching, but actually finding what you're looking for. Uh, as a company grows and the product catalog gets bigger, uh, the the data uh, gets uh, gets to a point where it's difficult to find information if you're working in just a normal Windows Server environment trying to find uh, the file that you're looking for. There are tools within PDM that make it uh, uh, process better, meaning the performance. Uh, we're not we're not getting a performance hit on our computer by searching in uh, a huge directory. It's based on a database uh, and ways to search like data card. Uh, instead of searching for the file name, we can search about aspects of the file and find those files easier. We'll come back to that. Hopefully you found it. If not, I'll show you. We'll come back to that and show you where Waldo was. Uh, within PDM, uh, right from within the PDM environment, which was, looks a lot like Windows Explorer, uh, I have a search tool in the top right. And I'm going to go ahead and hop into that search tool. And you can see the tabs along the top are the many different ways that we can search within the vault. So the first one, name and location, is really similar to uh, to what we would do in uh, just a Windows environment where I'm saying look in the vault called demo and look for any file that has the name of table and it's going to search. Now hopefully you notice that that search and the search results that popped up pop up a lot faster than they would in a Windows server environment. So the way Windows uh, manages files is kind of like a, a, a deck of cards all face down. And it looks through those files for the file name by flipping up the card, saying, is that the Ace of Spades? Nope. Flips it back down and moves on to the next file. And that's not very efficient. Uh, PDM is built on top of a SQL database. And what that really means to you is that all those cards are organized and facing up. They're in a table. So I have all of my spades in one column, my hearts, my diamonds, my uh, clubs, all in their own column, and they're lined up by... Uh, by their type, so aces in our rows. And that's how it looks through the files and why it can be a lot faster. But not only the way it searches and the backbone on how it searches, but also the ways we can search through uh, uh, not just file name, but things like using the data cards. Uh, in, a, in an implementation, you choose what kind of data cards you want, and you can build up your own data cards if you wish. But let's say I wanna look for a SOLIDWORKS part, you can see through here that I've got uh, DWG data card, image data cards. I've got ones for other different CAD formats. I've got an office card for things like Word, Excel. Uh, I've got a, a PDF card. What we want to look for in this case is a SOLIDWORKS part. So I'll bring up that SOLIDWORKS part card, and it presents me with a, just a blank. Um, we're going to grab a SOLIDWORKS model card. There we go. It presents me with a blank data card. We'll go ahead and maximize this window so you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to search for anything that has not the file name, but the description of pin. And we're going to look for, I'm going to clear out those selections and run that again. So it finds everything in my vault that has a file with the description. Somewhere in that description, it has to say pin in there. So this is quite a big uh, a list. We'll search that again of anything that has a description of pin in it. I've got this boom expander pin, a hardened tip pin, a leader pin. 
So we can filter on further just by filling out more of the data card and searching. So uh, in Windows Explorer, there's no way that we can search in our CAD data for things of a certain material. Uh, in this case, I could search for anything that has a description of pin with uh, a material that's somewhere in that material, it says 4340. And I run that search again, and it's found two options for me. The third window down at the bottom, this is kind of our list of files that it's found, is that I can select each of these files and look at its six tabs across the bottom, where uh, a preview of the file, the actual data cards to see the, the rest of the information about it, maybe I needed to know the part number there. I can look at the versioning information. If I'm looking for uh, assemblies, I can look at their, their bills of materials, and then actually where this file is being used. This expander pin is being used in a subassembly called uh, expander pin subassembly. Okay, uh, so I can find the file that I want. Even from this preview, I can uh, snap a measurement to make sure I'm grabbing the right file before I drag and drop this into the assembly that I want to use. Um, I, I won't go through all of these, but an, another one that's really popular to search by, we're going to go ahead and, and clear out our search here. I can just close the search tool and reopen it to clear that search out. Is that I want to look for anything in a certain workflow state. So maybe I'm a part of the change control group, and instead of looking at the emails one by one, I'll just say, yeah, I know some things are waiting for my approval. Show me all files that are waiting for my approval. And it's just going to list the files that I need to go look at and approve. So uh, instead of just a uh, file name and a Windows server location, it's going to be faster, and there's many more ways to search to narrow down your search on a big amount of data inside a PDM. So back to our slideshow here. wonder who found him. He's right there. <laughs> Dennis? Greg, I got to... <laughs> I had to mute myself when you uh, brought that up because that's like a blast from the past. I used that, uh, I think, when PDM first came out, but I replaced Waldo with Darren. So brought back <laughs> fond memories there. I think, uh, you know, again, search and find are key components in the PDM system that support some of the things that we've been talking about, especially design and reuse. Uh, they save, you know, some considerable time. In one regard, um, an example that I talk to many prospects and customers about and drives management crazy is you're not able to find something that you've done before and you end up redesigning it. How much time does that wait? And, you know, it doesn't happen all that often, but it does happen often enough that it is on folks' minds, especially management looking at how they can operate more efficiently. And maybe the last area, we've been talking a lot about uh, benefits to the engineering department. Keep in mind that this solution really leverages throughout your entire organization. We have companies that have brought in sales, that brought in manufacturing, quality control, the machining centers, manufacturing areas, to also manage their, their data because everybody reuses data and needs to make sure they have the right version. So PDM really does manage any Windows file type and you can leverage this across your entire organization, bringing those best practices and the benefits that we've been talking about that management loves to more than just yourselves. Greg, back to you after that. The next section is about collaboration. And uh, collaboration is a simple concept. It's just more than one person working on a project at the same time. And how do we facilitate that in PDM? For management, it's really about uh, not having uh, a singular resource for a certain task. It's being able to assign a group of people to a certain task to get that task done uh, faster or with the uh, correct knowledge in there. Do you have multiple specialists working on a project to get it done? And, and how do we accomplish that? How does PDM help uh, with uh, collaboration or multiple user environment inside a PDM? So inside uh, my vault again, uh, I'm going to go hop into a different project. And I have this carving knife assembly. And for this carving knife assembly, we have multiple disciplines uh, 
designing at the same time for this carving knife. Part of it is uh, uh, a motor. So we'll have someone who is a specialist in electrical motors and wiring working on this. We'll also have someone doing just the mechanics of it. How do the gears work with the knives that are running back and forth? And finally, uh, uh, hopefully you don't deliver a product that looks like this. It needs to look pretty. So we have some consumer design folks working on the actual handle design itself. So if I jump, uh, jump in here and look at the bill of materials, there are multiple files in here that people are working on at the same time. Me as Greg, maybe I'm working on uh, the top level assembly and just getting all of the components together at the same time. If I open that assembly in SolidWorks, give it a moment here. It looks like it's trying to bring up the graphics. We'll just go ahead and kill SolidWorks and reopen it. I can work on the, the pieces that I need to work on with no interruptions by just opening up in SOLIDWORKS CAD. But if I want to know who has what open, what may update that I need to change in the future, there is an add-in for SOLIDWORKS that comes with PDM that's on the far right of the screen, what we call the task pane. So if I click on that little blueberry, I can pin that menu off to the right and I can see who's working on what and uh, if there's a new version of the file, there are icons that come with the files to tell me what status the file is. If I have the latest and greatest, uh, if I don't have the file and I need to go get it, uh, I, I'm looking at this here and I'm, I'm looking at the top level assemblies for the, uh, the carving knife and the carving knife mechanism. But uh, Neil, another user, is working on the gears portion of it. So I, I'm immediately shown that that may update and I need to go grab those. If it does update, I don't have to close down the assembly and reopen it. I can just select the file that's updated, right click on it and choose get latest. So as soon as Neil checks in a new version of this file, I can go get that latest as I'm working. Uh, and then we have a, a third user named Dave who's working on the knife handle. Maybe he just opened the file and haven't saved anything about it because uh, I don't see it in my assembly yet. So this is a way uh, that SOLIDWORKS PDM uses its technology to help in the management aspect of collaborating on a design. Dennis? Yep, thanks, Greg. Yeah, this is a huge area that uh, a lot of our engineering departments that we work with customers on fight over, making sure that uh, people aren't overwriting information Again, this kind of just segues back to what we've been talking about with best practices, but also uh, time savings and working efficiently, efficiently that uh, improving productivity throughout the organization is really supported with the collaboration tools that you find inside of uh, SOLIDWORKS PDM. So some good examples and, you know, collaboration extends into other departments and having the right data at the right time and through notifications and workflow, making sure that uh, those people who need that information are receiving it. So pass the baton back to you here, Greg, for the last subject. Lastly, we'll go through uh, file support. And this uh, is, is a very nitty gritty subject, but if you look at it uh, from, uh, of why do we have all these different types of files? It's because we're managing different types of data. So uh, the purchasing department, the sales department, engineering department, all has different file types that they work with. And with PDM, we allow any file that in like a Windows system that you can say save as and save it into a location, we can manage that file just like we do with CAD documents. You've seen uh, the CAD documents that we've got have, have data cards that they're versioned and revisioned. They can go through uh, a workflow we can run tasks on, on CAD files. All of those different things that we can do in a PDM environment, we can do with them on other file types as well. And I wanted to sh kind of show you that in action. So within the vault here, maybe in a certain project, uh, I have 
I have it set up for my design data, which is where all my CAD documents are going to go. I have documentation. Maybe this is where uh, engineering change documents related to this project are going to go. And specifications. So uh, maybe this is the, the manual for the, the product or a list of approved vendors that sits in this location. Uh, any file that you can think of that's describing anything, we can store and version revision track, send through a workflow in the vault. So I just have a really big folder here on my desktop of all sorts of different file formats. I've got Excel, Word, PDF. I've got image files. I have uh, PDF files, DWGs, even zip files are uh, in, this, in this folder. Just a good cross-section of what you might run into uh, as a business. And I can just drag and drop that into the vault. It copies all of those uh, files into the vault. And I'm going to go ahead and check in that folder, which checks in all of the files that were in that folder. Now, if I dive into that folder, if we look at the state column here, you're going to see a lot of them are in a state called Office Doc. And some of them are in under editing. So based on the file type, I'm filtering it already to go down a certain workflow just by checking the file in. If we look in the administration tool, I have multiple workflows here and they're getting sifted into those workflows just based on rules. So if I look at the default workflow, that's my, uh, that's my workflow that CAD documents are going through. I can right click on that workflow and go into properties and I just have certain rules. This is kind of the catch all. There are no rules for this one. The other two workflows have rules that say for the office docs workflow that if it's not a SOLIDWORKS part assembly or drawing, send it through the office docs, except if it's a, uh, it's a word document that begins with the letters EC, so maybe it's EC dash and it's a four digit extension, uh, EC dash, and it's a category of an engineering change. We can create a category for that. So that is why as soon as I check in these files, all of these documents go into their own workflow. Now for office documents, you may not have a, a fancy of a, an approval process or make sure it goes through simulation. Uh, maybe it's just a document that's uh, a, a picture that we're referencing, but we can still manage that document. So uh, with this Word document here, maybe I want to like uh, have a history of it, but save it at the same time. The workflow for Office documents that I've made is really easy. Uh, it sits into an Office doc section where the permissions are really open. Uh, anybody can come in and look at the file and uh, change the name of the file, move it to a different location, edit the file. But I have this section here for a rev bump that I can just right click the file and send it through rev bump and it automatically goes back to the office document, but it's saving a revision. So maybe I, I hit a milestone with uh, creating this uh, technical documentation for my uh, carving knife. I can right click on it and choose change state rev bump, give it a comment. And now that word document is at revision A. If I did it again, right click, change state, and rev bump it again, it'll go to rev B. So this is just saying that this the PDM is not just a CAD management software, it's a file management software. So any files that we can toss into a Windows server location, we can also store it in PDM, and we can manage and track it, find it, use search tools, uh, use the data card. Each one of these own files based on its file type has its own data card. This is the data card for a PDF. This is a data card for a DWG and you can see they look very different because we're, we're tracking different key information about that file. Dennis? Hey, thanks Greg. Great examples again of how we uh, support other types of files. And I think, uh, you know, one of the examples that I uh, noted in my material here is going back to my engineering days, we had a set amount of time always allotted for supporting 
uh, our suppliers, our vendors, our customers, the contractors who install our systems with drawing packages. And I would always allot four days of engineering time for us to put those all together as part of the manuals, multiple copies going out to different uh, contractors and our supplier base. Again, how much time do you spend creating documentation? Greg provided a great example of multiple format types, but we can also, when things get approval, he mentioned kicking out uh, DWGs, PDFs, step files for machining, all the things that you're doing today to make sure that folks are getting the engineering data downstream. And it really does tie back into notification and workflows again, though, to make sure they're not only getting the data, but are they getting the right data? And they have the most current version because management, quite frankly, they see this as one of the weak links in their processes that lead to both, you know, the loss of time that I was talking about, but also potentially for scrap, whether that's making individual components or assemblies not being made properly, maybe something overlooked that needs to be at a job site and it wasn't flagged properly, so it's adding delays there. So we want to again assure that the right version is always available for all these downstream users. And this we find consistently ties into meeting management goals because again, we're looking at best practices and the time savings that we've been focusing on here today. So with that, I do have um, some people have asked for an overview of these summaries at the end and i'm going to send you off in our chat window uh, email addresses for both greg and i if you'd like some information or you have follow-up questions uh, not seeing any questions or any chat items coming up in our window right now greg is there how about you for wrapping up here yeah we just wanted to take uh, maybe 45 minutes and run through seven kind of quick hits on how uh, we connect our technology with uh, engineering goals and management goals. Yep, you did a great job of that. We appreciate everybody's time in here today. And again, uh, look for an email on when this is going to be archived. Or feel free to shoot us uh, any follow-up questions that you might have as well. Have a great afternoon, everyone. We look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thanks, everyone.